Hi, welcome to the Light of Deception. Today I'm going to be walking you through the fifth teaching in the series, Deception in the Church. The series started with the introduction to the website, thelightofdeception.com, and then kind of went through the major links that are on the site, kind of told you why the site is laid, laid out the way it was and is, and um, where it started with my own personal story of 12 years of deception, early occult practice deception. And after I hit the wall about seven years ago and hit this self-arrival aspect coming through the emergent church movements and in the doctrine of men and teaching visualization practice, going in within to um, tap into your inner child, that feel good self-arrival doctrine that's going out into the world and leading people into ancient mysticism, the desert father practices, Gnosticism, um, it's all this um, panantheonism, pantheonism, Buddhism, Hinduism, occultism and new age practices what does that do in actually doing in the church why does the church look just like the world why are there concerts in the church hey if you have the gift of singing and music good that's amazing to have that gift but if it causes people to be real illuminated and it's singing false doctrine and talking about how awesome and wonderful we are instead of how awesome and wonderful god is the true and living god right and then it's all about dazzling the five senses, leading people astray, and it's like the enemy, of course, is in the churches because that's where his deception abounds, right? He's going to rise in the false, Christ, false church system as the Antichrist, the new world order. How is he going to do that? Well, he takes over the churches, right? The ones that have fallen away from the word of God, that have dropped out Genesis, Revelations, Daniel, anything that would be really causing controversy in the church and making people not feel good about themselves, but really showing them their own sinful nature. That they just do the feel good, puffy up. Um, let's get into the doctrine of men. Let's um, say that the Bible is okay. So yeah, it's good, but there's other there's other truths out there too. So let's tap into all of them universally in an interfaith dialogue. Come along to get along to heal our earth. Some kind of environmental movement to usher in the earth's kingdom. Well, who's the ruler of this earth? What kingdom is rising next? Well, look at the world. There's no way that Jesus is reigning and then that Satan is bound. Right is wrong, wrong is right, abortions, murders, persecution, martyrs, ugly, just deceptive stuff going on globally. And can we heal our climate? Do we come along to get along to plant trees and heal our earth or are we worshiping creation instead of the creator? Yeah, be a good steward of what God has given you, but do not usher in the Mother Earth and Gaia, the kingdom of the forces, the Antichrist kingdom. So there is a false church system rising, seeker sensitive, emergent, bringing in the world and that the world doesn't have to change. They just sprinkle in Jesus and sad. So you're the inward man's not being changed but day by day. Nobody, everybody can stay in their fallen carnality and um, there's going to be sense of that, but you should be changing day by day, maturing from the immature Christian to a more mature Christian through his word in its entirety. The literal translation of the word of God, biblicalism, not Buddhism, Hinduism, New Age practices, panantheonism, pantheonism, Gnosticism, all these different things that are going on in today's churches and have the sprinkled in feel good doctrine of this world. Return to the word of God. It will be change you. Definitely change you. Stop tap tapping into the wrong presence of God and to the word of God and fill your head with his words, not emptying your head in a mantra saying Jesus over and over and over again would be the same as saying any other word over and over again to empty out the mind. So mind will be taken over in some kind of new age mysticism. That's why everybody feels universally connected. And that's why they feel like they need to usher in the kingdom of this world because when they breathe, the world breathes together. The animals are, were linked to everything, linked to the trees and the rocks and the plants and everything's interconnected. So they are self arriving. And I pray that you never fall for this false church system. Just stay in unwavering faith on the word of God. Next slide. Hi, now we're into slide two. So it says largest Christian rock concert in history. 
looking at the, the church deception. Wow. If you just look at this picture, um, you're going to see that what in the world has happened to these churches? Why is it all about tangible, feel good, light shows, smoke screens, amazing music, everything to tantalize and dazzle the eyes and the ears, right? All this lighters up and, and um, um, in, even within the music, you're seeing that the doctrine's not right. Is that all the time? No. It doesn't mean that you can't be a great singer and really be praying, praising the Lord with your voice and your gifts and talents. It's when it goes astray and it's all about the five senses. And you're tapping into what um, Garden of Eden, Eve, right? The serpent in the tree. If you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you'll be like God. So it's more of this self-arrival instead of dying to self. So and your emotions will lead you astray. Always remember that. I'm going to go to the next slide now. Thank you. Okay, this is the table of contents. So to show you the breakdown, most of the teachings that you're going to find in this PowerPoint presentation are done by Pastor Chris Quintana from Calvary Old Bath. He taught on many different things through the years but here we go this probably goes back 2012 2013 think about it this way if you taught on it all those years ago seven years ago eight years ago um what does it look like today better or worse so the first teaching is called what is the seeker sensitive church it is dazzling the eyes and the ears to, to fill seats in the sanctuary. It's telling everybody what they want to hear about how special and wonderful and, and awesome they are instead of a sinner saved by grace to fill seats. The next teach, teaching is what is the emergent church? Okay, so the emergent church, um, emergent, just the word alone is not, um, you want, might want to look that up. The, what is emergent um, is the enemy, right, of this world that is more emergent than anything. Remember that as you're in the emergent church system and people are, they're bringing the culture into the church instead of going out into the culture and bringing the gospel, gospel and nobody needs to change, it becomes a community center. It's being deceived in a group of community of believers. Instead of a God builds his own church, you do not need to entertain people and bring in the most popular thing, movie that's going on in the world, the most popular TV show into your um, church. It should be a Sunday school where they're teaching you the word of God, where you're opening your Bible, not fill in the blanks using a couple scriptures and maybe getting through one or two to bring about the pastor's topics and what's going to make you feel good about you. Arriving at yourself or dying to self? Read the Bible. It'll help you. Next is refuting emergent church ideas. That is really great. That was brought in. I believe he taught it to a group of um, college students. So you want to look at, listen to that too. It's just going to give you more ins and outs about how the emergent church system now turned into other words, you know, that could be called um, liberal theology in the church, um, interfaith dialogue, um, where we're bringing in pastors or whatever they want to call them, priest, or they want to call them um, the holy, or holy person in whatever their, their movement is or whatever their religion is into their churches to say, hey, can't we all just get along and heal our earth? Be careful. Next is deception in the church, the old path. Um, this one is brought to you by Love for the Truth Radio by Cindy Hartline and her husband, Richard. They do a fantastic job bringing pastors on and teaching little segments about what these pastors are seeing. They're teaching through the entirety of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, Old and New Testament, cover to cover type, types of teachings, letting the Bible, you know, translate itself instead of having humans um, come along and provide some kind of mystical experience through um, the Bible. It's sober-minded, steadfast, vigilant, and warning. And remember, if you're warning, you're not going to be popular in this world. People do not want to turn away from their sin and feeling good about who they are in order to say, hey, man, it's, I can't even believe God can use me in my fallen condition. And he chooses to. He loves me and he's changing me and he started good work in me and it'll bring it on to completion. That is, uh, is amazing. So less of you and more of God and more of his word. And your relationship um, with him is through his word. That's how you get to know him and not in some kind of weird 
visualization being in his presence. You know, can you think about the Bible? It always talks about when he was in the presence of man, that people, that it even was his own, a man after his own heart, they were dead. Like they came to, they were frozen in fear, right? So are we really st standing in front of God these days in the presence of God? And is there a visualization practice that really brings you into the presence? Or is the presence of God really learning about who he is through his word? Think about those things. Next slide. Okay, now I'm going to break down the table of contents for you. So we're going to go to what is a seeker sensitive church. As I said, you see the picture there, you'll find many just like it. Okay, so Michael Jackson's on stage and and um, you could even see Led Zeppelin and, and so secular music uh, and um, really popular um, Christian music to dazzle the audience and you're all of a sudden you're feeling so good and puffed up about the entertainment and being drawn in by your five senses that your senses will lead you astray. So once something looks good and feels good, is it truly good? Does it line up with scripture? Does the scripture teach about um, having a concert in the church? Um, no, there's nothing wrong with the gifts, like I said, of um, singing. That is great. And um, being a good musician and talented, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, a lot of times you'll notice that they're, they're singing about something that is extra biblical in doctrine. And they're either tapering down or something or make, making Jesus something he's not. And so be careful and be wise in these days and vigilant and be steadfast in the word and get into a Bible believing church that doesn't have, um, they're not scared to teach the truth these days to offend you. The Bible is controversial. It's going to change you. So of course it's going to be offensive. Next slide. Okay. This one's called what is emergent church? What is the emergent church? It'll break it down for you. Let you know how it came to be about what the, maybe the name of it was and the beginning um, where it has changed from the emergent church maybe to a more um, uh, liberal theology. Like I said, um, it could be that it's more um, you'll see the world inside the church. It's going to be evident to you. It's going to be everything that you see at a concert, everything that you see in your own house in the TV. You know, everything you see at a movie these days, so everything's okay and permissible. And where's the Bible? So look around. Do you see anybody holding the Bible anymore? Right? Or is everybody getting up, writing their name in the sand, lighting candles, nailing things to crosses, you know, just everything so tangible about you? That's where you're going wrong. Bring the hard stuff into the church, right? Listen to this tough stuff to hear. That's what, that'll change you. Yeah, there's some great stuff in there too. Um, Jesus died for us. Paid the ultimate price he, in his perfection for our fallen condition. His perfection. Can you imagine that he came, took on the body of flesh, and died as a ransom for our lives? Sinners saved by grace in need of a savior. Should humble you. Shouldn't be at a self-arrival. He prayed the ultimate cost, and we should never take that lightly. Next slide. So here's the one refuting emergent church ideas. Again, foundational to understand what the Bible actually says compared lively to this new emergent movement. Well, you're going to say it's not new. Well, fairly new, right? Even if it's been around for the last um, 10, 20 years, um, it's still fairly new. And it's rooted, don't get me wrong, so it's taking you back to all the feel-good stuff, all the back to a, um, a more emergent mindset, um, really um, centered in Gnosticism. So you're going to read the Bible, and it's going to tell you what Gnosticism is. It's some kind of um, hidden knowledge that some people have arrived to. It's a spiritual formation under mysticism. And you're going to want to know this day what the language sounds like so you know it's in the church. You're going to start hearing it. You're going to be amazed at when you're sitting there. You can stand back. This is a good time to stand back and look at what in the world is going on in here. Everybody is so entertained. Everybody is so feeling good about themselves. Everybody has all the answers. Do you have all the answers? Or does the word of God have all the answers? That's where your answers are found. So that is where humility comes in when you die to you. It's like going from an ego parade 
to dying to self. It is a hard wall to hit when you know that you've been deceived and trusting anybody after that is going to be a real, real hard to do. It's going to be a journey to get back to who can I trust? Where do I go to really hear the truth? Where is somebody dividing their word of truth accurately, right? That's going to be the hard stuff. And then you're going to be looking around. Are you going to trust anybody in a Bible study that's teaching it? Are you going to trust anybody that's presenting something online, on TV, on, on those kind of things? So you'll learn to trust in God alone. And then like-minded people, and you'll pray for that and be surround yourself with like-minded people that will help you stay steadfast in these days. Next slide. Okay, this is fantastic. This was put together by Love for the Truth Radio. Our Love for the Truth TV now, and it's done by, um, put together by Cindy Hartline and her husband, Richard Hartline. They do a fantastic job bringing pastors onto their um, show and having them teach about what they're seeing going on in today's churches and to return to the old path. Like in Jeremiah 6, I think it says 616, and then Jeremiah 56. Yes, 56 chapter and verse, right? Then you're going to see them come, the lots of different pastors from different places are going to be talking to you about what they're seeing going on in today's churches and warning you and bringing forth truth straight from scripture. A man doesn't need to be able to come along and tell you what their ideas are. The truth is found in the word of God alone, period. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is called Calvary Old Path. Through the Bible with Pastor Chris Quintana. See, God uses people, but they're humans. Humans that are walking this, this life just like we are. And doing the very best they can to rightly, rightly dividing the word is what he calls it. So there you go. It's not like he has never faltered. Not a perfect man, but steadfast for over 30 years. Just learning and teaching through the word of God. It's simple in its simplicity. Let the word of God teach itself it's going to translate itself right and the holy spirit will you know, bring you about in all truth so you're praying and you're reading not in a mystical way in a sober-minded and vigilant way okay so then that's the link there you're going to be be able to walk through the whole entire um, old and new testament with past pastor chris quintana doing your own work too to make sure that everything that he says is so right and he would tell you to do the same Rightly dividing the word of God. That's what's important. Okay, next slide.